T is ready. Mike is ready. I'm ready. And the important question is, are you ready? Hey, welcome to the Michael Brody podcast. I'm Michael Brody. Thank you so much for listening today. This is the fifth episode, Exemplify Kindness. Not quite the series finale, but very close to it. And I got to say, I'm super excited for this episode. Kindness, out of all of the whys, this is the why that's so closely tied to our impact on others. Yes, there's learn for a lifetime. Yes, there's redefining normal, you know, defy the odds. But exemplifying kindness is you taking ownership and you taking responsibility and impacting other people's lives. It's, it's more than just yourself. It's more than just making a difference in your own life. It's making a difference in others' lives. And so that's why I'm really excited to talk about it today. But before I do, I want to go into, you know, why it means so much to me. And when I was reflecting on it, thinking about some of the stuff to chat about for this episode, I thought about my childhood and how my mom really instilled kindness in me at a young age. She would tell me, if you're going to say anything about anyone, make sure it's something good. And as you know, I don't know, maybe that seems really small, but think about it as a, a young kid who followed his mom's orders. Me and my brother were fairly good kids. I think she would agree with that um, with a few exceptions, maybe. But uh, it was important for me because it constantly made me seek out the good in people. You know, yes, there's there's always something that you may be able to critique or something that maybe doesn't fit your needs. But with that in mind, I constantly was looking for how does this person bring value into the world? Like what's something really cool about this person that I want to let them know? And so I think it's it's fascinating how that's how kind of started off for me as as more of a basic level, just saying something good rather than speaking negativity into people. But then how it's grown over time into not just simply that moment, but but what can you say to people in a moment that leaves it, that makes them reflect on it, that makes them grow at, well at far after that moment? And that's what I'm excited to talk about today is, is how kindness is not just some simple term, but it's so much more. And I'm joined today by someone who truly exemplifies kindness in its purest form, someone who encourages me to, to be kind on a consistent basis. And it's evident every time she walks in a room. I'm joined today by the wonderful Lawanda Stone. Hello, Lawanda. Please, uh, please greet yourself. Thank you for being here on the show. Michael, my brother, thank you so much for having me today. I'm excited for our conversation, as always. Well, let's dive right into it. You know, we don't waste time. And I want to go into the definition of kindness, kind of how they break it down. I think that's a good place to start. For me, if you were to ask me, what is define kindness? Those are one of those words that are like hard because you know it, you've always heard it your whole life, but to explain it, to define it seems kind of hard. And so I looked it up and... The first thing I got was kindness is the state of or the state or quality of being kind. Thanks. That helps out a lot. So I, I looked for a different definition and I stumbled across uh, one. The general one is kindness is defined as the quality of being friendly, generous and considerate. But I, I wasn't quite satisfied with that. I thought that was still kind of a basic level, didn't really get into you know the meat and potatoes of it. And so I looked at inspirekindness.com, an amazing blog site that talks a lot about it. And they said, yes, according to the dictionary, that's how it's defined. But kindness means so much more. And I'm quoting them here. They said, kindness can mean different things to different people. The meaning is in how you choose to show it, be it through empathy, acceptance, kind gestures, thoughtfulness. The possibilities are entirely up to you. Kindness might look like being helpful or showing empathy. It may mean doing nice things without expecting nice things in return. And then here's an important clarification they made. Kindness is more than just being nice. You think of kindness and nice. If, if you're going to be compared, if you're, if you're going to be described as one of the two, most people would choose kindness, right? Because it has more sincerity to it. It means more than just, oh, that person's nice. Well, gosh, nice is, is kind of that one of those boring terms nowadays. And they said there can be a lack of sincerity in just being nice. There is often a perception of doing the minimum, whereas being kind is doing intentional, voluntary acts of kindness. It's not only when it's easy to it, not only when it's easy to be kind, but when it's hard to be. Wow. Luanda, what are your thoughts on that? How does that kind of expanded definition of kindness resonate with you? It's mind blowing and it's soul cleansing, to be honest. Hmm. Because Let's start with our 
topic for today, exemplifying kindness, in order to exemplify anything, that's coming from within, right? Mm -hmm. So we first have to be kind to ourselves in order to show that level of kindness to others when it's easy and when it's difficult. So I'm blown by that description of kindness that you just shared. It's it's everything. And I have more thoughts that I know we'll get into. We absolutely will. And I think what the the definition kind of brought to light for me is a lot of times I feel like they look at kindness like it's superficial. Like, oh, that's fake. Yep. But I think what this brings to light is like, there's no one way to be kind. And maybe we get stuck in that kind of mentality of, okay, being kind is going up to someone and giving them a nice compliment. No, you know, some people show kindness in different ways. Maybe for them showing kindness is just listening to you. Hey, you have my full attention. Let me hear your problems and, and I'll just be, you know, sounding board for you. Maybe that's kindness. Maybe kindness is actually, hey, this is where you can be a little bit better. This is, I really do care for you. And I know that you care for your craft Here's some areas where maybe you can improve on. That could be a sort of kindness as well. What are some ways that you feel you're kind in your day-to-day -day life? Well, for me, Michael, kindness is an energy. Mm. And it's, it's how you move through the world, right? So it's customized depending on who you are as an individual. So for me, since I was a little girl, like I can't not smile. So if I see you and you see that I'm smiling, it's because I'm happy to see you, whether I know you or not. It does not mean that I am happy or that everything is going wonderfully in my world. I could be going through the biggest hardship and psychological trauma that there is. But when I see you, I'm smiling because that's the energy that is sparked within. You know what I mean? So. I do. My smile is one way that I believe I show kindness. Um, earlier this week, a friend reached out and said, smile hard under that mask today. Mm. It's an energy, whether someone sees it or not. You know, you can feel someone smile in their eyes. Other ways that I try to demonstrate kindness, I say the word try loosely because it has become somewhat innate for me. I have a bit of a filter that leans into the kind side, whether, whether it's, you know, solicited or not, or even welcomed at times, you know, many years ago in college, I had a really close friend in undergrad. And she told me in hindsight that she just had never met someone as nice as me. And I know we talked about a distinction you mentioned between being nice and being kind, right? She hadn't seen it before. And she thought my kindness was too good to be true until she like it never changed <laughs> so she saw that well this is just how she moves through the world and when it's a stark contrast to how other people move through the world they might not be able to receive it right away but like you said it's in the small acts and gestures that meet people where they are so whether i'm in an office and my colleague is working remotely i know one year i set off to to make it a point to Every day, try to find someone who was a remote worker. This was pre-pandemic when it wasn't a thing that we all did, right. um, whether in school or in, in a career setting. Find one person and reach out to them just to let them know that you're thinking about them. See if they're good over there because they don't have that office interaction. So that's a way that I've done it in the past. Listening, like you said, and, you know, trying not to judge people and hold things in my heart that may have rubbed me the wrong way about right. something that they did or said, that's where they were at the time. Let it go. And letting things go is an act of kindness. But it, it hits home before it hits anyone else. Talk about that a little bit more. Was Without that judgment, letting things go that someone may have said or done that rubbed you the wrong way. Not holding it against people is another form of not holding on to it, which holds it against yourself ultimately, because mm -hmm. you have engraved whatever they did into your heart and it's affecting the way that you move around them. You're not free. Absolutely.
And that that totally makes sense. And something that stuck out to me when you were speaking there was how there's truth. You know, when you're when you're kind to someone, that's the truth coming out. The truth about how you feel about them, the truth about what they uh, you know possess or what they contain, whatever. When I'm telling someone an honest compliment, that's truly how I feel. And and being kind and nice, I think that's also another distinction in a way of people think. So when you're nice, sometimes that can be forced. Like that, like we said, it doesn't sound that sincere. But when you're kind, that's something you actually observe and something you can prove on a consistent basis. When you mention kindness as an energy, that energy isn't just gone one day and, and gone, you know, here the next, but it's consistently there because it is genuine. Every time you show up, it's, hey, this is what stands out to me about you. This is what I've observed on a daily basis. You're not lying to someone. And that's why I think kindness hits deep too, is because you know how real and raw it is. Yeah, yeah. And don't get me wrong. I get that there are people who aren't thinking about being kind from day to day. And that's okay. It doesn't mean they're not being kind, but their mode of operation is maybe not to wake up and say, who can I be kind to today? Or how can I be more kind to myself today? It's just they're focused, they're living their lives, they're producing, they're going through struggles, they are taking care of their families, they've got a crap load of schoolwork to do, a long list on their daily agenda, whatever it is. I'm not saying that we should all shapeshift and like you said, be nice for the sake of being nice. It's just, it's also not that hard to just notice and look someone in the eye and say hello or hold a door or listen without waiting for the three second mark where you can interject what you think. Like just be present is being present is being kind. And for me, I'm probably going to say this a few more times. It starts with yourself. Continue to say it. That's what we need to hear. Mention it's not that hard to be kind to others. And I agree, but I think we should note that there's still barriers, right? We live, especially in the United States, we live in an individualistic culture, society, to where we're so focused on ourselves. And you talked about being present and how that's so important. And we continue to hear this theme on the podcast, but that's hard because it's an extra step. It's not just being present in your own life, which is already hard enough to, to kind of step out of your comfort zone and really lock into your day by day and not worry so much about the future, but then to think about other people as well. To, to not put all of the focus and, and care and attention to you, but to extend it to others. That's another barrier in itself. And so I, and why I think kindness can be, I don't want to call it rare, but it's not as common as we may like it to be, as we may want it to be, right? Um, and so how do you feel that kind of contributes as well, just the individualistic society and you know wanting to having all of these worries that we're focused on in our, in our own life, What advice or what words do you have there? Well, we all as a collective need kindness more now than we ever have before. Look Mm. back over the past two years, we're entering our third year of a global pandemic. We are separate, yet we are all going through some of the same things, you know, not being able to do some of the activities that have sparked joy, like concerts, festivals, travel, visiting family, friends, losing family and friends, losing time, losing future dreams with some of our loved ones. We all need kindness so much more now than ever. And if you take a step back and think about it, even though we're all bogged down, we get what we give. So if we give kindness, will receive kindness. And that that's the energy that helps us get through our lists and get through the struggles and the hardships and the hard days and moments and breathe through it. Like we need each other. Absolutely. We need these conversations, whether it's at mm-hmm. the elevator or, uh, you know, at the gas station, you know, like I'm not saying you got to be bothered with other people. Some people don't we don't, we can just let them be where they are at that moment. They don't want the interactions. They, you know, it's fine, but I'm a believer that you attract who and what you are and that shifts and changes just like the wind. But when you need it, it will be there. But when you give it, 
you will receive it in return. Absolutely. And and even I can relate with going back to school, even like after the pandemic and being completely virtual for a bit of time, it was so inspiring, so heartwarming, so just amazing to be back on campus because you saw those small acts of kindness that you just didn't see, you know, in the virtual setting, the the opening up of doors. And, and, and this even gets to the point that you brought up of how that kindness, it usually rubs off and you'll see it manifest in other, in other areas of life as well. Just for example, with the door, you see someone open the door and what's the next thing? That person that just got the door open for them, now they're opening the door for the other person. And exactly. it's like, that's just a small example of seeing that small act of kindness and how much that can, wow. And for me, this is you know a bit random, but for me, it just, it feels great because it lets me know if it's you know done to me or even it lets the other person know that hey i care like even if it's just for two seconds even if if we only have a, a minute or two for me to show this to you that i care that i have a genuine interest or i just want i, I wish you goodwill that's kindness and right. it doesn't right. have to be something lavish it doesn't this is everything i'm gonna do that you know this is what we're gonna uh go through to to tell them and be as simple as opening up a door and giving them a smile and say, hey, I wish you a great day. Yeah. I have two quotes that I want to share with you. Please. One, kindness is a language which the deaf can hear and the blind can see. Hmm. It's a universal language. It's felt. And the second quote is, the fragrance always stays in the hand that gives the rose. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So when you are kind and you're giving, it gives back to you. You feel good about you. Absolutely. Can you say that first quote again? Yeah. Kindness is a language which the deaf can hear and the blind can see. That reminds me of the quote almost from, you know, the goddess Maya Angelou and and how it people don't quote me here, but, you know, people often don't remember what you say and all that, but they remember how you made them feel. Yes. That's what that reminds me of right there with, with so, kindness. They remember how you made them feel in that moment by just you smiling and saying, wishing them a great day by you noticing, Oh my gosh, they did a great job with that presentation. Let me just give them some great feedback. Hey, you did amazing. I, I know that that was not you know easy, but you really killed it. That is powerful. And you don't need to see it. You don't need to, you don't need to hear it. None of that. As long as it's present, it's there, it's felt, and it will stay for for a very long time. It's sustainable. And it comes from the heart. Mm. So it's not fake. It's not a nicety. It's mm. genuine. And that moment can shift. It can change someone's day. Like someone having a really rough morning, things just aren't going right for them. You do that one act of kindness not even intentionally, but just because this is how you're moving through the world in decency and honor and, and self-respect and self-love. This is how you move in that moment. You've, you've shined that light. You're sharing that love and light with someone else just by being who you are. Allow me to, to let the listeners know a bit more about how you exemplify kindness and how you've done it for me. How have you showed me what kindness truly is on just such a deep level? And it's allowed me to express that to other people within my life. I met Lawanda during a summer internship at Pearson that I continuously bring up here on the podcast. From the very get go, from, from the jump, Lawanda was right with me. She was very kind. I remember the first week she sent me a, a I am that was, hey, I, you have a lot of talent, you have a lot of potential. And as long as I'm your manager in this role, I'm going to make sure your voice is heard from Hob Hoboken to Honduras. <laughs> and I believe that's what it was. It's something it was. around it. It wasn't that. <laughs> yeah, you remember that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was it meant so much to me, especially being, you know, an intern coming into a, a corporate setting for a multinational company, you know, not just some mom and pop up the up up the road here in Reno, but 
a multinational company with business in many different countries and a lot of different functions to explore. And to see someone that was so caring, that welcomed me in, that saw my potential, that believed in me and was willing to take the time to speak with me, willing to share her advice. And this all manifested in our one-on-one calls. We would have those one-on-one chats each and every week. And it was my favorite part. I just always look forward to, okay, one-on-one chat with Lawanda. Yes, we'll talk about business. We're not, you know, wasting the company's time or anything like that. But I know that we're also going to get into fulfilling ourselves. How can we better ourselves as well? Like through the call, if anything, if I'm going to say anything, we weren't wasting the company's money. We were uh, implementing a new development program, perhaps, of, of how we can grow as <laughs> as uh, future leaders. So yeah. that was how I was exposed to Luanda initially, as just a manager who was far from a manager. It was truly just a friend that wanted to be with me alongside my journey. And so thank you so much, Luanda. And I know you might have some other words to say about just being kind in the workplace, because I don't know if we see that so often. You hear about the damaging effects of incivility and and all those things. What do you have to say about being kind in the workplace? Listen, um, this is an underrated, under talked about Hmm. need. And when I think of kindness in the workplace, I am not thinking of be sure to say hello and ask people how they're doing, you know, and the rudimentary, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. How was your weekend? Good. You know, (laughs) are you looking forward to the weekend? Yeah, it's going to be good. Like not that, but it's, we go through a lot. We spend a lot of time at work. Our heart, our blood pressure is going up and down during the day over our mission, our vision, our values, our project list, our meetings, our time to work, the deadlines, like the relationships. Let's be honest, they're not all positive and they don't always feel good. It can come in waves like a roller coaster. Things, emotions, decisions, there are all it runs the gamut of the ebbs and the flows. We're not always included. We're not always invited into certain spaces. We're not always heard. Mm. So here's where kindness comes in for me. Sometimes we have to forgive the people who have hurt us in the workplace. The people who didn't create the spaces at one point in time. The people who didn't or still don't see us. The moments that mattered to us, but we were muted or we didn't feel that we had a place or a seat at the table or that decisions were made that that just outright may have ostracized us. Sometimes those very people who did what they believed was best at the time can be your biggest allies and champions later. But it's up to us to, again, let go of that energy, that place that that moment put us in, when we decide, oh, they can forget about coming to me or they'll need me before I need them. You know, if we hold on to that, which is our right to do, or to tell them how they made what, how, what they did made us feel, that's our right as well. It's important to have the conversations, but ultimately the most important conversation in my book is the one you have with yourself. When you can choose to forgive people for for doing or being who they knew best to be or do at that moment so that you can make way so you can be free and continue to be your full self and to not lose your voice. And guess what? To scoot up to the table that you are at and make an impact. To not stop and further mute yourself because you felt like somebody else's opinion on your role or your tenure or your value. It's not about what anyone else thinks is what I'm saying. But in terms of what you think about what may have happened to you or been done to you, because let's face it, something is bound to happen. Some decisions going to be made that you feel keeps you back or doesn't give you an opportunity that you deserve let it go, forgive, because that very person 
or that very table that you didn't have a seat at could be waiting for you in another part of the organization or with another leader, leadership team, or with another organization altogether. So that's, does that make sense? What are your thoughts on that, Michael? That's beautiful. And it absolutely makes sense to me thinking, again, this is very different for me to think of kindness and forgiveness in the same way. And so I appreciate you kind of stretching my mind out to think of it this way. It's so easy to go the opposite direction, to choose one side, polar opposites, one side or the other. And I know we kind of touched on this earlier in the week. It's so easy to be like, oh, they didn't they didn't give me this opportunity. Oh, they didn't see me right. Oh, uh, they're worthless. Oh, no, no, I don't like them. I don't need them. Forget them. That is so incredibly easy for us to do, to just flip from one side or the other. But what's harder, yet what I would argue is more efficient and effective is to look into, okay, well, why? You know, maybe why didn't they give me this opportunity? And and realizing that a lot of times it's not just someone just wanting to intentionally be rude to you, but there are so many things that are just clouding their judgment. There's so many barriers that they are personally facing that they can't see you clearly. They they have, their their vision is blurred. They just cannot see you because of everything that's in front of them, all of the struggles and worries and whatever that's currently happening to them. And so that gets to your point of maybe that's it's just how they were acting at that time. And we don't need to continue to be like, hey, just because they were this way now, we can never be kind to them again. Just because they weren't kind to us, we're not going to be kind to them. That's not kindness. Because again, kindness is looking at the inside. Because really on the inside, that person probably does care for you. You know, it, it's it's tough to say it because their actions aren't really matching up. But if we're being honest, they probably do. They probably do. But it's just not manifesting itself into actions. It's not time. Hmm. It's Maybe not time. it wasn't about you. Usually it's not, I feel like. People don't do things against us. They do things to meet their own needs. And so what do you feel like being kind in that moment can do for them? I think that's also a, a, something to think about. What do you think that does for the person that maybe wasn't kind to you at that time in the workplace when you still are can, are kind to them when they know I may have, you know, didn't didn't meet expectations here? How how do you have you seen that impact at all? And from your experience of you being kind to someone that may have done you wrong, what, what have you seen? I've seen them evolve. Hmm. I've seen them eventually share more that they couldn't share at the time. And I've seen utter appreciation for the kindness. You know what seems to be emerging for me here from just this part of the conversation is the close ties between kindness and patience. Mm. Yes. Being patient, because that's all I'm hearing here. You're still being kind because now they, if they do have that understanding, if they have evolved, now they can be kind to you. you know, now you can have that bond but you didn't just give up on them. You didn't just say, ah, oh, this is it. Let me cut ties. Goodbye. But I'm still with you. I understand that you're dealing with your own stuff. And in fact, it's, it's even a bigger message because you're saying, I'm still with you on your journey to help you get through this. I'm still with you to help you evolve. Yeah. And it's not easy because they might not need you for that. It might feel that they're rejecting that from you, that help, that support, that ride or die. They may not have time to deal with you even. So I think what's important in those situations is you move how you move. You keep doing the work. You keep yourself free from the angst of being uncomfortable, the angst of not knowing what's happening or why or why you're feeling rejected or feeling what you may have, you know, like trying not to get caught up in the confusion of like trying to figure things out, just move how you move without you, holding on. And this There's is authentic. To do. This is authentic to get back to the point about this is authentic because yeah. I know you said a, you kind of had a saying that we discussed on a call before that really resonated with me. How if you're going to throw stones, you better make damn sure that you're going to throw some flowers as well. And so even applying this to here, often are these people that aren't kind to us, is there nothing good about them? Is that the case? Is that is nothing stands out? Nothing is unique. Nothing brings value to you. 
No, that's never the case. Everyone brings value in some sense. And so I feel like almost in a way when you're still kind to them, you're still acknowledging the good that they have, right? No one's worthless. No one doesn't have any good in that. Well, in an ideal world, right? But right. that's almost what I'm hearing as well. You're still being authentic when you're still being cont- uh, kind to someone on a consistent basis because you're still noticing the good that's in them. And if you're just mean to them, if you're uncivil, then you're rejecting the truth. You're rejecting what's in, right in front of you, the good that has been presented to you, the good that they have done, the good that's still present in the moment. Well, and also they may not be in a position to do any good for you. Hmm. The kindness is, it's of you. It's being exemplified from within you. So it's not really about what they do or how they move or what they didn't do. Hmm. It's what comes to the surface when you show up. Wow. Whether it's on a project call or in the break room, what is your energy? How do you want to move through the world? And another thing I want to say is, I'm just being honest. For me, it's different, a little different with people I'm in relationship with. So coworkers, friends, family, people I'm in relationship with. I and people and and that relationship can be extended at work if we just see each other say, hey, you good, you good. You know, that's included. But out here in this world, people who I speak to and don't part their lips to speak back, or if I hold a door and there's no acknowledgement of that, that still bothers me. I'm no saint walking around like completely unaffected by people. And I just don't think that's realistic. Like there are people who are rude out here. So I don't have all the answers. I'm still figuring it out too. But as far as I can control it, I'm probably still going to speak and not know whether I'll hear a greeting in return. I'm definitely always going to hold a door if I see somebody approaching behind me. Other people's decisions and rudeness is not going to change who I am. Let's dive into that a bit further because you've just said it. Not a lot of, not everyone is nice, not, or not nice, but kind. There's people that are rude. You know, there's people that are uncivil. So how does someone that does have a kind heart, someone that does have that energy within them, what advice do you have to them to not be dejected, to not be hurt, to not feel, you know, a lack of hope when, you know, they live in a world that may not reciprocate that kindness back to them sometimes? You be the light. You be that one light that they weren't expecting to come across in their day. And even if, I mean, you can't avoid light. You're going to see it. Mm -hmm. Now, whether what they decide to do with that, if they want to, you know, get tight and who do you think you are being kind or whatever, that's on them. But for me, I just remind myself it wasn't about me. Like that's them and that's on them and that's going to stay with them because I'm not absorbing any of that energy, that rudeness. I'm going to continue to be me. So I would encourage us all to just allow yourself, you know, to move freely without kind of holding on to those transgressions as far as you can control it. You know, take your time. We don't ignore things. We deal with what's in front of us, but kind of like, if you're floating on a river, in a river on a raft, just let it go. Just let it flow. It doesn't need to stay with you mm-hmm. or live in your heart. And I want to transition at this point because I think we've we've been talking about kindness to other people. But as a theme that you keep pulling over and that you keep presenting, kindness to ourself. And let's talk a bit about that real quick here. Specifically... One thing that I think gets confused oftentimes, kindness is never, kindness is not just being a yes man. That's not kind. That's not kind to yourself. And one thing that really stuck out to me one time we were in conversation, as you said, saying no is a quality answer. And to me, that just threw me off because no, like so often no is looked at as a thing that's, oh, that's, that's rude. Wow. No. That's that's mean. 
you're not saying yes, kind being, but being kind is saying yes to everything. Being kind is, is telling everyone that, yeah, I'm, I'm always available. I can always help you. I can always do this and that. No. And I thought that was beautiful. And I even shared it with a, a group of mine at a club. I'm a part of the business student council at the university of Nevada, Reno. I said, no is a quality answer. Just like you told me. And I said, it's about wanting to take, for example, hopping onto a phone call. You have a phone call scheduled to someone. Maybe you're not feeling the best that morning. Things are all over. Your, your plate is completely full for the day. You know if you get onto this call at 3 o'clock, your energy is uh, at this point is already completely drained. You're not going to be attentive. So guess what? You're, do, you're being kind by saying no to them. Hey, no, we can't have this conversation today. Because think about the other question you should ask them. Would you want me to arrive to our conversation half myself? not 100% fully me. How would you do you want that? And most people would be like, No, I want you 100% yourself. No is a quality answer. You're respecting yourself. But not only that, you're respecting the other person's time. Because you're only gonna get you're gonna respect their time by showing up as yourself and not as someone who's been battered all day long and has been going through too much stuff at the time. So I would love to hear even your your thoughts and your response and how you can connect saying no as a quality answer to kindness in general. Well, nobody has time to waste. Mm. And no is a complete sentence. No. You don't even have to explain. It's you get a meeting request, decline. Sure, you can add a message like I have a conflict or I'm on deadline or whatever it is. But regardless, when the recipient sees that you couldn't join the meeting, they're just going to either keep the meeting Life is going to go on. Nobody's going to die because you couldn't do what they thought they needed you to do at the time. Or they're going to reschedule it around a time that works for you. No is a complete sentence. And it's, it is it is kindness. It's exemplifying kindness, first and foremost, to yourself and realizing that you don't have to be everywhere. If you're everywhere, you're nowhere. You're wow. spreading yourself too thin. I have done it. There was one year in undergrad. I think I was in your year, Michael, junior year. Yeah. I said no to nothing. I had an internship at Fortune Magazine. I was president of our campus chapter of the Society of Professional Journalists. I was national editor of our college newspaper. There was one more thing. Maybe it was my academics, but I guarantee you that was last on the list. <laughs> I'm doing all the things, which meant nothing was getting my all. And everything suffered. Sometimes you got to say no. Prioritize. And sometimes you got to say no to yourself. I can't do it all. I'm not designed. I'm not equipped to do it all. So guess what? I'll take I'll take two of these things and I'll do them really well. And then maybe next semester I can pick up the other two because I would have checked the previous two off my list. Well, you're certainly right. You can't do it all, but you have done much, Lawanda, including one thing. You started a type of yoga company. Is that correct? Namastone? Yes. And can you share about your journey behind Namastone and how that's even connected to your personal journey of kindness and being kind to yourself truly? Well, Nama Stone was a gift that I did not know I'd be giving myself in 2020 when I gave myself the birthday gift of yoga teacher training, mm. not to become a teacher, but to deepen my walk and my journey in yoga, which I had been doing for at least 15 years. I just wanted to know that I was doing the postures right, and I wanted to know the meaning behind the Sanskrit terms. I just wanted... I just wanted to walk in it deeper. And then the pandemic hit and the five month teacher training program turned into eight. So essentially most of 2020, while the world was suffering, I spent time with a wonderful cohort of peers learning how to give people in the world who wanted it themselves, a little bit of themselves back through yoga. So by the end of the teacher training program, I felt a responsibility to teach what I had learned to other people who needed it or feel like they needed it in their, in their lives. So a week after getting my 
certification, I started Namastone Yoga with La. It's online. Um, I started teaching online a week later because I had been reading so much about, you know, starting your own business, but specifically becoming a yoga teacher and don't wait. I didn't want the grass to grow under my feet. I just did it afraid. I ran in front of the fear is all. My best friend is a technologist. So I went to her to pick her brain. An hour later, I left with a website. <laughs> and the next morning, she sent me the logo. It just, everything fell into place. So I I teach online. I also teach in person every Friday night. I teach a double header at Lifetime Fitness in Columbia. I teach Root, which is kind of an entry point to yoga, more beginner. It's for all levels, anyone. But if you're easing into it or if you want a slower pace, that's Root. And then right after that, I teach a Surrender yin yoga class, which is just together. It's, it's, it gives me such a gift to share, to just hold space for people at the end of a long week to come back to themselves and to come back to their breath. So what wound up, what, what started as a kind gift to myself, because I knew I needed more time in that space and I wanted to get into it and lean into yoga more deeply has like I receive so much kindness from it. Like when I sit in that studio and I observe and hold space for people who are just there to come back to themselves. And, you know, we take 20,000 breaths a day and barely notice mm. in that space. They notice and your breath has the power to calm and center you. So Seeing them give themselves that gift of kindness, oh my gosh, it it just, it makes my, like, my fingertips are tingling right now just thinking about it. It just makes my heart beat fast. I wish people could see, like, a snapshot of you from uh, all the listeners could see how just excited, you know, thrilled you are to chat about this. She has the biggest smile on her face right now, trust me. What I'm hearing, and correct me if I'm wrong, but... You know, you went into this on this journey of really you know, trying to understand yourself more, really being kind to yourself, seeing what this practice of yoga that has been so effective in, you know, 15 or so years, as you mentioned, how can you take it a step further? But what you started to notice over time was your cup, right? The cup that you would fill of kindness to yourself. It started overflowing. It started overflowing. And you were like, I have no... I have a responsibility. This I'm not just going to let this fall on the floor. I'm not just going to let this be useless. But now I have a responsibility to show other people the value of just being kind to yourself first and foremost and how that can then spread on. Look at that. You were kind to yourself. And then that spilled over to now you doing classes, multiple classes every single week. Yes. And our first class, the homework assignment was what is your highest aim in yoga? And I had never thought about that, really. But my highest aim boiled down into one word, and it was detachment. Jealousy, codependency, you know, clamoring for, you know, what do people think? What do people want? What can I do? Where can I show up? How can I be included? Eh, I was tired of it. I needed to be free of that. Yeah which connects into letting go, letting go of transgressions, letting go of the unkind moments that we experience on a day to day. Like it's not, it's not always personal. It's, it's not always it's, personal. Most of the time it's not even about us. People do things to meet their own needs. So what can you do to meet your own needs? Mm. How can you be kind to yourself? I love it. So love- that it exemplifies out into the world. You got it. And I want to say before I shift over to one of our last topics of discussion for today, what advice do you have to people that oh, maybe yoga is interesting? I've, I've been thinking about it. Uh, maybe I should try it out. What advice do you have to people that may be on the fence or maybe you've now made them extremely interested in trying out yoga? What advice do you have? I would tell people don't make any assumptions check it out for yourself. It That can start by reading yoga journal or doing some research online about what it really means. I know there are some myths around yoga. 
people don't understand it's it goes way back to our African ancestry like it it didn't have the meaning that it had today in terms of for many people it's about having a toned body or you know getting more flexible healing from injury these are all things that can be residual effects from yoga i see it every day but it's really learning who you are as an individual it's changed my life michael like i didn't know i didn't know what I needed. I didn't know the breadth and depth of what it would give me. And I'll sum it up in this way. It has very little to do with how you show up on your mat, but everything to do with how you take the practice on your mat out into the real world. So for example, you're on your mat, you're trying to twist into a warrior one or draw your hips up to the sky for downward facing dog. It doesn't always feel comfortable and neither will the moments that you face out, you know, maybe you're leaving the gym or the yoga studio and you almost get into a car accident. Breathe through it. Just like you breathed through that warrior one when it was uncomfortable, getting comfortable with the uncomfortable essentially is a part of yoga practice. It's a part of a yogic lifestyle and it helps us live our lives and move in a way that is centered on acceptance, no judgment, kindness. Comfortably uncomfortable. That's the state we always want to be in. And Lawanda, yoga changed your life, but you didn't let it stop there. Now you're using it to change other people's lives as well. So shout out to you on that encourage all the listeners out there if you do have an interest to yoga just try it out just like jonah mentioned with improv just give it a shot see where it takes you right i want to kind of wrap up with something that applies to kindness that just blew my mind i was reading an amazing book by john amechi called the promises of giants and talks about how leaders we make promises to ourselves our organization other people around us and one in particular, he talked about the looking glass self. It was, it's a theory brought up by a sociologist named Charles Cooley in the early 1900s. And Leslie EDU kind of broke it down best. And so I'll use their definition here. The looking glass self describes the process where an individual is based their sense of self on how they believe others view them. Using social interaction as a type of mirror People use the judgments they receive from others to measure their own worth, values, and behavior. And so that's the looking glass self. The promises of giants he brought up, you know, identity isn't just something that bubbles up to the surface. Here I am. <laughs> Here's my Calvary. Hello. Um, but rather, piece, uh, probably a large piece of our identity at that comes from how we see ourselves reflected in other people around us. Mm-hmm. What, potential, what potential do we see in ourselves from what people are telling us? And John and Mechi... He had two really good promises to make um, because he he almost basically ended up tying this all in of the looking glass self, not just from an individual perspective, but as a leader, what power does that give you? Because even you as a listener, now you have great power to inspire other people by just being kind and being kind and, and following the looking glass self, he said, is not telling people that are not working hard. Hey, you're working hard. You're doing great. You're not doing anyone any favors. In fact, that's as uncivil, that's as mean as you can possibly be. That's as cruel as you could potentially be is telling someone the complete opposite of what they're doing for their own detriment. But rather, you know, the looking glass self as, as leaders, we have the special responsibility. We have the special gift, the, the opportunity to tell people, I have faith in you. Look at them like you have faith in them. And that's one of the promises he said. Promise people around you, I promise to look at you like I have faith in you. Show them that on a consistent basis. And the second promise he made in that section was, you know, I promise to reflect back the things you need to succeed. And so I think that's a phenomenal call to action on top of one that we'll hear from Luanda here shortly. But the looking glass self, consider that. Consider how those around you, their identity in part comes from how they see themselves. So what, what responsibility do you have now? How can you look for the good in them and how can you reflect that to them and not allow our preconceived notions, judgments, barriers within the day are often flawed interpretations, as John Amechi said in the book, to, to get in the way of that. 
you know, to, to not let people's potential, to not let the possibility for them to do amazing, incredible things to be limited just because of how we weren't present in the moment with them and how we weren't aware of the greatness that they bring to the table. And so that's just something I want to make sure I bring up in kindness.org to, to sum it up said, we believe kindness is humanity's greatest asset. Hmm. Luanda, how do you feel about that? Such kindness is the world's humankind's greatest asset. I got to tell you, many years ago, decades ago, my grandfather, I was dealing with some situation. I don't know what it was, but I do remember like it was yesterday, his response to me, which was, well, just talk to them. That's why we're here, to be kind to one another, to learn from each other, right. have the conversation. I will share one last quote with you. Please. He who sows courtesy reaps friendship. And he who plants kindness gathers love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we all, <laughs> for all the listeners out there, we all we love to just shoot quotes to one another too. Like even in, we'll shoot each other text messages of quotes or rap lyrics that I thought were really cool. Bars, um, so, yeah, bars. So it's cool because if only you could see our face right now when we saw, it, we were both like, "Oh my gosh, that was beautiful." Everything. <laughs> that is so true, though. That's the goal. It's everything. At the end of the day, that is one thing we can control. In a world where there's so much that is out of our control, shouldn't we shouldn't shouldn't we just be thrilled that what we do control is so incredibly powerful, not just for ourselves, but to impact others as well. And it doesn't cost a thing. Mm. Free ninety nine. <laughs> Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Free 99. Gosh, you know, we could pick up this, we can continue this conversation for hours, literally. Um, But I think it's time that we kind of start to wrap up here. And I'd love if we can hear one last call to action from you, Luanda. They've heard a lot, but what's a challenge you have to all the listeners out there? I challenge each of you, including yourself, Michael to be kind to yourself, make a top 10 list, your top 10 list, your favorite things, people, places, tastes, experiences, whatever it is, your top 10 favorite things, make a list and aim to do at least one of those a day. Mm. For me, whether it's eating popcorn or (laughs) drinking lemonade, dancing, writing, having a meaningful conversation, by the water, ideally, make your list and have at it and see how when we start by being kind to ourselves, you have that little boost that you need to share that light out into the world. (laughs) (laughs) Just slow claps. Slow claps. Thank you, Luanda, for the amazing challenge. Thank you to the listener. Thank you to the specific listener, whoever you are, one person. I'm talking to you specifically. Thank you for listening to the series. Um, And again, we'll have that listener feedback episode. Let's be kind. You know, I think we've, we've heard a lot of call to actions on being kind, but now it's time to actually put into action. It's time for it not to just be words that are flung around here on this podcast, but to see it in real life, to see it in front of you. And more importantly, and what's going to be probably one of your favorite parts is to see it now reflected in the lives of other people because of your actions alone. And so that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for listening. Luanda, any last second last minute words, goodbye, anything. Thank you, Michael, for being so kind as to invite me to have this conversation with you today. Uh, Like I said, back during that first I am to you, I see you. And as long as I'm here on this earth, I'll do what I can to make sure that your voice is heard from Hoboken to Honduras and beyond. online. Look at this. I appreciate it. Everyone, please have a great day. We'll chat soon. Let us 
hit the music. Be kind. <laughs> is ready mike is ready wait i haven't done it <laughs> i haven't done this in a while i have to remember the order okay t is ready mike is ready i'm ready are you okay cool